video. This time we're going to be solving question 3 from the Eastern Cape September paper which is related to um, projectile. But before we carry on, don't forget to subscribe for the channel and thumb up for the video. A group of learners set up an experiment to determine the height of the school. They release a tennis ball from point A at the edge of the roof of the school building as shown in the diagram below. Point B is 2 meters above the crown and the ball takes 0,125 seconds to cover the distance from B to the crown, point C. Ignore the effect of a friction and here is what uh, the picture looks like. We have point C which is the ground, we have point B which is 2 meters above the ground and we have point B, um, A which is at the roof of the school. Now important here say um, point B is 2 meters above the ground and the ball takes 0, 0,12 seconds to cover the distance from B to C. So the time that the balls take from B to C, this time here, according to the data, is going to be 0, 0,125 seconds. That is the time that the ball takes to cover B to C. Write down the magnitude of the rate um, of change of velocity of the ball. Now, rate of change of velocity. Let's quickly write down what is that rate of change of velocity. Remember, every time we speak about rate, it means that it's divided by time and then change in velocity. So it's change in velocity divided by time. What physical quantity is this? If you go all the way back to grade 10, you would remember that this one is acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. That one is acceleration and they want to know the magnitude of the acceleration. This one is a projectile and therefore the magnitude of the acceleration is a g and is equal to 9,8 meters per second square approximately. That is the answer here. The question 3.2 say calculate the height age of the school building. Okay, now this question is a little bit tricky, not that difficult, but a little bit tricky because we don't have much information, okay? So the only information we have actually from B to C. So using B to C, the first thing we are going to do, guys, is to calculate the velocity of the ball at point B. We are going to calculate that velocity of the speed because it's the main need of that velocity at that specific point. We are going to calculate that one. All right. Now, how are we going to calculate that one? We are, we're going to use B to C. We have the acceleration, we have the um, displacement, and we have the time. Using that one, we're going to calculate the velocity at B, which will be initial velocity from B to C. So I'm going to write here B to C. Remember, we speak, we must work as organized as we, as we can. Now, according to what we have, and if you go to the formulas, which one is the one we can use? Well, we can use this formula here because we have the displacement, which is two meters. We have the initial velocity, which we are looking for. We do have the time and we have everything. So this one is the most suitable formula to use right now there. So let's write the formula. Displacement is equal to initial velocity multiplied by the time plus half acceleration multiplied by the time square. If you write A instead of G, it's fine. You'll get full marks, okay? So let's substitute and we have that this one is two. Initial velocity is what we are looking for. We're looking the velocity at B, remember that one, multiplied by the time, which is 0, 0,125 plus half 9,8 bracket 0, 0,125 and you know what? Let's uh, move all this one a little bit to the um, left here. There we go. And maybe perhaps even this one as well. There we go. Okay. So it's more accurate. So now when you do this work, which is simple math. Now, when you do this calculation, which is quite simple, and I assume you all know how to do it, you will get that the um, initial velocity here is going to be equal to a 15,3 
8 8 meters per second now important i didn't write here direction because the object is only moving down so obvious down will be a positive to make the question easier so let's write it here but the all the motion is all the way down only so it will be easier like that so now we have the velocity at b this one will be at b all right so the velocity at b the initial velocity um, from b to c will be the final a to b so using that one we may now calculate the displacement here we have um, all that so we are going to look for this displacement now all right we're going to look for that displacement and this for this case we have that the initial velocity is equal to zero the final velocity is um is just calculated there it was just calculated there. so saying that and according to what we have what would be the most suitable um, formula to use well we are going to use this one here we have the final velocity which we did just calculate the initial is zero because it was dropped the acceleration is 9,8 and the displacement is what we are looking for so this one is a quite simple uh, formula we cannot use uh, this one because we don't have the time from a to b we cannot use this one because we do not have the time from a to b so if we come here and we say now um, a to b we want to work from a to b the formula we're going to use is final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square plus m um, 2 multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the displacement remember we are looking for the displacement so let's substitute what we have and we have that is 15 comma 388 is equal this is a square remember it's a square equal to 0 square plus 2 multiplied by 9 comma 8 multiplied by the displacement which is what we are looking for once more quite simple calculation it should not be a problem um, here and then uh, the final answer for this one is going to be equal to 12,08 meters but now the total displacement will be the height of the building in this case height of the building will be equal to the displacement total and that will be equal to uh, 12 comma zero eight plus um the other one which is two meters the one from b to c so the maximum height of the building is equal to 14 um comma zero eight i hope it's clear this is the answer for that question that question um, is not that bad but it's a little bit um, more work Okay, so let's answer question 3.2.2 and say calculate the time it takes the ball to reach the ground. So the total time. Once more, we have the final time here, which is given to us, but we do not have the time from A to B. So that is what we're going to calculate. We are going to calculate the time from A to B so we can add the two times and that will be the total time. So let's go to a new page for that. And here we are. So let's begin by writing the data. And remember, we're working from A to a B. That is where we are working first of all. So what we have, the initial velocity is zero. The, obje the object is being dropped. The final velocity, it was calculated and it was, remember, 15,388 meters per second down. I'm going to write down. Everything is down here. The acceleration due to gravity we have is 9,8 meters per second square down and we have the time is what we are actually looking for okay because we need that time so we can calculate the total time now what formula are we going to use here according to the data we have the best formula is the first one which is quite simple so we come here let's write the formula here which is final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time and when you substitute you will get 15,388 is equal to 0 plus 9,8 multiplied by time guys 
quite simple the time when you do this simple calculation you will get 1.57 seconds and then the total time let's write um, t total will be equal to the time a b plus the time b c that's all and we do have those times so the total time will be equal to um, a b is 1.57 and b c is 0, 0.125 that will give you the total time which is 1.7 seconds that is the answer for this question i hope you understand is not really that bad the next question is to calculate the velocity with which the ball strikes the ground. Now, quite simple because we have the whole displacement, we have the total time, we have the initial velocity, we have everything. So it's quite, quite simple to do that one. Let's go to the new page here. And that is question 3.2.3. Okay, let's write the data before. We have that the initial velocity is equal to zero. The final velocity is equal to unknown and this is remember is from this is from a to c we're working with the total whole motion of the um, ball of the object here okay so what else we have acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9,8 meters per second square we do have the time let's write it down 1,7 seconds and we do have the displacement because we did calculate it which is the maximum height and that is going to be equal to 14,08 remember let's write it here in the in the data is down and this one is also down so according to this data we have what formula can we use here we are and well good news according to the data we can use either of the formula that one that one or that one any of the three formulas they can be used any of the three formulas for displacement okay which is a good uh, good news All right so um which one is easier for you well i think the first one perhaps this one here which have already rearranged for final velocity we can use that one but in fact you can use all of them so whatever you feel that is easier for you you can use them I am going to write this one just because it is already rearranged for the final velocity. All right, but nothing else to um, acceleration multiplied by the displacement. What am I going to write there, Mr. Gomez? Be careful. There we go. That is the formula. And then if you uh, substitute here, it's quite simple. This one is 0 squared plus 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by the total displacement which is 14,08. There we go, guys. Quite, quite easy. And then um, you should get that the final velocity is equal to 16,61 meters per second. Done. Now here, the, uh, the question is asking for velocity that it does have direction. Therefore, in this case, you do have to write the direction. And then to finish the question says cache a position versus time graph for the motion of the ball from the moment it was released until it strike the ground. Use the ground as uh, the zero reference point. Okay, that is an important detail here. You cannot draw the graph anyway. You must use the ground as the zero reference point. There are videos I have done on how to understand graph, which is um, I highly recommend it for this topic. Indicate the following on the graph, the height from which the ball was released, time when the ball strikes the ground. Quite easy. So let's do it on this side here. So we have the um, Y axis, we have the X axis. In the X axis is going to be the time in second. And remember, this is just for you to understand this X axis will represent the ground because it's that zero position, okay? So that is the reference point, okay? Now here, the y-axis will be the building, for example, and this one is the y-axis, which is in actual fact, they're the asking for a position versus time, so it's 
position is y, not g, y in meters. Okay, and the only thing you have to represent is the height and the time. So, from what height or at what what is the height of the building in this case? It was a fourteen comma zero eight. That is fourteen comma zero eight. That is the height of the building. How long it took to uh, reach the ground? It took a uh, one comma seven seconds. Okay, and now what is the shape of the graph? The shape of the graph is all the way from there will be a curve and the ball will do that. That is a curve that is going to represent the a graph. Let's uh, try to make it nice. Well, there it is. That is the graph that you have to draw in this case. Okay, taking down as positive. This one is down as positive but i don't think there will be um, a need for anybody to say upward is positive because the whole motion is down guys this is the question i hope it helped it is refreshed from the term one so it is quite important uh, i hope it helped thumb up subscribe for the channel thank you for watching i'll see you next time mr g here